hey all good morning uh, uh, welcome to student technologies my name is ranjan uh, i have more than 10 plus year of experience in software development and uh, today session we are going to discuss an angular real time project uh, let's go and discuss what is an uh, angular real time project we have divided this angular real time project into three part first one is angular second one it's a real project and third one is a real time let's go and discuss each and everything in depth means what is angular what is a project and what is the meaning of real time as you know angular is a ui framework which is used to create single page application or short form spa means using angular you can able to create a single page application okay that will go and discuss what you can build using the angular using angular you can develop web application you can also develop mobile application and also you can develop desktop application right if you learn angular using this angular you can develop both web both mobile and desktop application now the question what you will develop okay you will develop this web mobile desktop these are different different platform application but what you are going to develop you are going to develop a project that we call as a project means whatever web application you develop whatever mobile application you develop whatever desktop application you develop that application we call as a project then what is the definition of a project project is group people working people working in a specific requirement called it project okay. means group of people by like group of developers or group of different different people are working on a specific requirement we call it a project now the question what is a real time means you are developing an application and that application you are not going to use the who is going to use that application is used by a client or a user means if you are developing an application or developing a project if that project is used by a uh, used by a client or user then we call it a real time project got it means angular is helps to create a different different platform application project is a concept where you are going to develop this kind of application a real time application means after developing the project after developing the application now the end user the the person who is going to use the application that we call as a real time project okay let's go because uh, in angular real time project we are more focused on project anyhow you will learn the angular we will give you angular end to end uh, all the topics but our main intention of this course is you have to give what actually industry is working on means in the real time how the company is working on angular real time project okay let's go and talk about more on project in industry in any mnc they are divided a project into two part let me discuss one by one first one will be the project the first project is divided into two part as i told first one will be the functional requirement and second one will be the non functional requirement the functional requirement will be the suppose uh, if you go and take an example of e-commerce application the function functional requirement will be the list of products okay 
and they filter the products next one will be the suppose um, add to cart and next one suppose payment and order confirmation you know these all are the basic example basic features of e-commerce site okay means there are n number of features but as of now these are the basic features of a functional requirement means if you're going to develop an application each project divided in two part one is functional one is a non-functional let's go and discuss what is a non-functional requirement okay non-functional requirement means to develop this functional after developing this functional requirement the non-functional requirement how to improve the application how to track the application how to security the application these all are coming on the non-functional requirement okay let me uh, explain all these things one by one the non-functional requirement first part will be the core standard means how you can write a code and that code is standard to the company second one second one will be the <clears throat> performance performance you for of your application application means how your application is working in desktop and mobile we are also going to provide these things second third one third one will be the logging logging will discuss how if any error will come to your application how you will go and track that error and store the error in your application that we are going to cover in logging Third, next one next one will be security the security means if your application how to do the authentication how to do the authorization lot of security mechanism phishing cross cross site scripting all this different type of security how we can do in case of non functional requirement we are going to cover in the security next part the next part will be the Passing. Passing means suppose you are calling one function multiple time and you are calling the API multiple time. How we are going to use the inbuilt caching mechanism of Angular, inbuilt caching mechanism of our um, uh, application to cache the data. That is the use of caching. And then one will do for the unit test. How you can go and uh, write the unit test case for your each and every component because that is one of the non-functional main re requirement the unit test case the unit test case pass also we are going to cover in non-functional requirement after that we will discuss on debugging because you know the without debugging you cannot you, you cannot know how the program works then using our different different tools in angular we will going to discuss how you can do the all kind of debugging okay these all are the non-functional requirement where most you focus in this project okay you will learn the angular that's okay we will go also going to give a mongo express no we are going, going to give everything but when we are focusing mo most on the project part in project part we will divide into two part one is functional one is non-functional functional part we are going to develop the angular you will also develop the the functional requirement but Apart from that, we are giving this kind of non-functional requirement and this non-functional requirement is more important than the functional requirement because functional requirement anyone can do. If you learn Angular, you can do. But this thing, coding standard, performance, logging, security, caching, you know, testing, debugging, lot of things is available in non-functional requirement. How you can go and implement these things in your application, that is our main agenda of our project. Okay. This is overall structure of our what we are going to do. Before that, let me open our um, let me open our one of the uh, that uh, <coughs> file uh, that training file. You will learn about what actually we are going to give you. First, we'll learn that we'll go one by one. First one is the project. Second one is the project tool. Third one is the Angular. You will learn about all Angular in depth training fourth one is the logging how you can log and track the error fifth one will be caching how you will cache the data and using different different type of storage engine of a browser then we will learn about different, different kind of security mechanism in application 
and seven seven like next chapter will discuss about library suppose you are you want to create your own library you will learn about how to create your own library how to create your npm package how to publish that package how to use that package all these things are going to cover in library apart from that the class is the ui library we are giving another ui library we have to go and explain about bootstrap flex layout prime mg material design because these two are the world known to this prime mg and material design both are both are these two are mostly used application means the ui library in the market if you go any company either they can use material or either can use prime mg these two are the most demanding ui library in the front end if you learn any language if you learn angular or react or view anywhere but you have to you have to know that the prime mg and material these two are the basic fundamental of ui library and you know the ui library bootstrap bootstrap is the one one kind of um, css library using the css library you can do the all the css designing all these things okay and flex layout uh, the same as the layout now all people are using most of the flex layout flex layout is one kind of uh, like you can design the site in different different type of format then you have to use the flex layout this is the add-on we are giving uh, apart from that the angular real-time tools will will let you know how you can use the debugging and how you can integrate your application into google analytics if anything if anyone doing your application how you will go and track each and every activity activity of a user suppose you are developing one application and you want to track okay that feature is used by user or not all these things are going to learn apart from that we learn about lighthouse lighthouse is used to like performance uh, check the performance of your application in desktop and mobile the lot of things we are going to learn here after learning all these things we will go to the final stuff is called the deploy build and deployment build and deployment means how you can go and enable the multi environment application because you know in the different different in the in the market you are not going to develop only one environment suppose you are a developer you are working on development so if i am a tester i am working a test environment suppose business person is going to work on production environment then we will go and enable multi environment application how you can go and enable the multi environment application Next one will go for the enable decoration because nowadays everything is uh, ship and build in Docker. We'll go and enable the application in Docker. Next one will be the Heroku. Like uh, if you don't know, like Heroku is uh, one of the same as um, Digital Ocean or same as AWS, same as Azure. They all are the hosting provider, means the deployment uh, pass uh, platform as a service. They are giving the pass platform that using that uh, pass, we are going to host our application. Heroku is giving the free account for everyone. For test and run your application, you can set up the Heroku. And in Heroku, we'll go and deploy our application. We can live see how our application behaves. Okay. Apart from that, also we are giving the another things add-ons. Add-ons means uh, NGRX uh, is the one of the state management concept in Angular. Using this NGRX, you can we will learn what is the NGRX, what is the use of NGRX. A lot of things we'll go and learn. And progressive web app, how now now you can see that if you open any of your site in your mobile browser, it's saying add add this shortcut to your screen, add to add shortcut to your desktop. Like that kind of like, without installing out your mobile application also. If you, anyone wants to create a shortcut for your application in their mobile, then that time there is a use of progressive web app. We learn how you can convert your browser application to a mobile application in the in your mobile means without opening the same application multiple time in the browser automatically it's going to create one automatically going to create one icon for you if you click that is going to open in that case we'll learn about the progressive web work and later we'll work on the service worker service worker means it's a background process for your application suppose suppose you want to send receive some notification like nowadays you know all the application caught in the notification system you are sending something, receiving something. That time of we are using the service worker. This will be all the add-ons will be more interesting part. Now, apart from that, as I told earlier, you will be min stack developer. You have to learn the Mongo and you have to learn the Express. You have to learn the Node and you also you have to learn the Angular. These three are okay. This course is Angular uh, real time project. But the Angular real time project is not only the Angular part, not only the project part. Because you know data is required, right? Where the data will come? Data will come from the, the backend first we have to learn. The backend will develop in Node.js and Express.js. But where the data is going to store? We're going to store in the MongoDB. 
ट्रस्ट मी नाउ डेज एवरी वन ओके एवरी वन इन द मार्केट नाउ गोइंग फॉरवर्ड दिस मीन स्टैक डेवलपर ओके लेट मी टोल व्हाट इज मीन स्टैक डेवलपर एज ए टोल वी हैव टू कवर दिस मोंगो एक्सप्रेस एंगुलर एंड नोड these are the combination of our angular real time project angular real time project don't think okay we are only going to learn the angular but trust me apart from angular also we are going to cover these things because only angular you will learn but the data is required right how to develop this functional requirement where you get this product where to, where you going to do the filter where you going to add the cut this all this data will come from the mongo db and you you know UI cannot add talk with the uh, Mongo. That cannot talk with the UI part. Means the database part. Then for that we need a communication. That communication is our API. Let me draw something. And before start the project, let me draw something. I let you know how we we are going to plan a project. Then we'll go and learn the Angular and a lot of things we are going to do. Okay. Let's first let me discuss one thing. Suppose you are developing one application called e-commerce just example we are developing one application called e-commerce okay. and it will going to create the clone of flipkart and don't worry like clone flipkart means just giving a reference you can mention any any project name anything but our intention is why e-commerce because if you open an e-commerce site it's the best example suppose i am opening flipkart this is the best example of your end to end means if you developing this kind of a e-commerce site using angular node mongo then you will learn end to end of everything end to end of everything means how to design the site how to do the search how to do the login how to do the sign up how to do all kind of filtering everything you will learn using the one application don't worry like you can mention in your cv that i have developed this kind of site you can mention any client name we are also going to give the client name don't worry about that but our main intention will be we are going to create one e-commerce site that should be looks like exact the flipkart and that is going to cover end to end of everything everything means whatever i have explained whatever i have explained in this tool whatever you are doing all these things we are going to cover bit by bit in that project okay before that let me go and discuss the how the project should be looks like we will go and discuss one basic of a project then we will go and discuss each and every in depth of that project okay as i told every project contain three part okay the first part will be the ui part the second part will be the api part and third part will be the base part to first understand this concept of why i am saying all these things because maybe you know all these things but always remember these are the basic stuff if you develop any application in this world if you go and work on any mnc anywhere maybe the structure will be different but always remember these three are the basic vital role for your application why i am saying because ui ui is the screen ui means user interface right ui stands for user interface this user interface is the actual screen where user are going to interact just example you are you are every day you are interact with your whatsapp or every day you are interact with your facebook now you know facebook store your data you doing something you processing something all this kind of stuff is not doing in ui always remember from day one ui only used for view the data view the data send the data always remember as a developer your primary focus always be this two don't write any complex logic don't write any kind of like uh, heavy logic in ui side why i am saying why not ui side because ui is run on client machine what is client machine suppose i am i am opening my in my in my chrome browser i have opened the flipkart okay 
now this flipkart is running in my machine okay due to that if i will go and write heavy logic in the ui itself then what will happen it will go into consume the application memory means the system memory as well as it will take much more memory of our browser right due to that always remember the initial part initial part the ui ui always be only used for two things view the data and send the data okay and this the ui is the primary part why primary part because this is the first part of your application because you user or client user means when i say user means the people who are using the application the user is the person who is going to use this application first this is the first screen for the user just imagine if i develop something and there is no ui what is the what is the use of that application right the same way ui is the primary part of, of our application due to that your focus always be more into ui because the user is going to interact with these things okay but as i told ui is responsible for view the data and send the data and due to that logic logic part we are not going to avoid, we are not going to write in ui okay now what is you will ask what is logic just example if i click on any of the mobiles okay and if i go to any of the mobiles click okay now what happen we can able to see list of product in left hand side list of filter in left hand side right hand side we are displaying the list of product and the question we are not going to store all this data in client side right we are not going to store all this data in client side as i told to store the data we require the database but ui ui cannot interact with the database you will ask why ui is not going to interact with the database the, the answer is the answer is ui ui means the user interface let me explain the user interface only know three things always remember a ui only knows three things a web browser okay one first one is the html second is the css third one is the javascript what i'm saying just a second if you are going to develop any browser application or web application or web ui web ui in that ui only understand these three things html css and javascript as you know html is used to design the website Design the website, web page, or web page, website, or web page. You can say anything. CSS is used to styling the web page. Okay. JavaScript is the programming language for the browser. imagine if you are developing any kind of web ui if you are developing as per web application then browser don't know about your language browser don't know uh, java browser don't know c sharp browser don't know node.js browser don't know nothing browser only knows these three things html css javascript now if you open this flipkart site you can see that if you go and right click and inspect the data you can see here you can only able to see the html things right you, you already know there is a lot of code is written backside but only browser know the html css and javascript due to that our when you are going to develop any ui part the ui only used to send the data and receive the data right that's the reason first our basic have to know the html css and javascript okay i think you people know html and css javascript if you don't know also in the in where you're going to do the project that time also you will learn most of the html and css okay and what about javascript the angular is javascript is a programming language for our application but you will ask me why this javascript required 
okay the question is why this have a script required as i told here the ui is used to view the data send the data okay now the question is how i will go and send the data how i will go and display the data to display the data and to send the data means send the data and display the data and after that also validate the data we required javascript okay javascript is a programming language for web programming language for your browser means browser is going to only know javascript is a programming language but what is the actual use of javascript javascript html is is used to design the page if you can design the header if you can design the footer if you can design the all these things all the required but when i when i do this kind of filter when i click or on click all this kind of functionalities is done by your javascript because javascript is not going to process your data javascript is task will be send the data to the server and after data receiving from the server how to display the data you will going to do all this kind of stuff using the javascript okay means from your api let me go to this one user interface is only used to view and send to send the data to the api we required the concept called javascript okay means to send data this layer is the api layer application programming interface right application programming interface API stand for application programming interface means when you send the data to the server the server is who is the server this api okay you can write this api okay you using Yeah, so the API is stands for application programming interface and API main responsibility is the UI responsibility is, is going to display data and send the data. The API responsibility will be received from the client. Client means the UI. Second one, process the data based on the request. That going to, I will explain what is request after the process is going to send the data to the client let's go and discuss each and everything in depth as i told when you send some data to the api or api is another part you call as a server okay a simple word server this api you can develop using multiple languages spring boot you can develop spring if you know the .NET, you can use the .NET Core. You can develop, or if you if you know the Node.js, you can use the Node.js. N number of API, but either you can go for Angular, okay, or you can go for React, or you can go for suppose um, Vue. 
you can use the view that is add number program language using the um, ui you can develop the user interface same much to develop one server either you, you can use the spring boot other you can use the dot net or you can use the dot node js that is end number program language using that okay that will learn later how to develop the ui will learn later first we have to learn about the process flow because that is you have to understand first then we will go for coding. okay as i told ui is used to only send the data to the server when you send the data that we call a request as i called or we call as a request okay the request means using this request user is going to send the data to the server okay and second part will be the process the data okay process the request request means whatever whatever request coming from the client is called as a request and how to process the processing part suppose just example in this example if i click on this filter based on this filter data is coming right this filter request is go to the api api will process that process that request and after process that request it will send back the response to the client means but where the data is stored the question is when you filter the data api only work will receive the data and it will send the same request to the database what database database means because finally the data is going to store in the database okay data is not going to store in the api api part only will be the process the data the database is the part where it actually we are going to store the data means that is called the database the database is divided into two part basically one is sql another one is no sql okay sql what are the sql like suppose the um, ms sql and another one is oracle postgres uh, suppose mysql all are the sql structure query language or all are the rdms you know the concept if you in, in your college you know the rdms relational database management system rdms and if you go to no sql the example will be the i'll explain what is the rdms what is uh, what is uh, no sql just let me give an example what are the example of a sql is a ms sql oracle postgres mysql all are stands for rdms if you go to no sql the example will be the mongodb okay the cosmos db there is n number of couch db there is n number of no sql databases there these are the no sql database go and explain what is a rdms and what is a uh, this no sql database okay but before that first we complete this flow api is going to process the data what is process the data i have sent okay i want to do the filter the filter request go to server server will send the request to the database database based on of the query because database understand the query right that will going to explain but based on that is going to filter the data after filter the data then what happen database is going to send the response they send the response from the database to server means api after data is received from the api api is going to send the same response the same res whatever data will come from the, this api we are going to send to the ui okay guys why i am explaining all these things this thing you have to first understand if data going from ui to server this is called request if the data coming from server or api to your ui is called response okay you have to understand these things it's called response okay the combination of request and response is called as the web server let me let me tell response okay this data you are sending its request you are receiving it's called response now to send the data and receive the data we need certain type of programming languages in that languages we are going to write in different different because if you are ui you are using angular in database you are in the server you are going to write a spring dot net node express anywhere 
a database we are using sql or we are using no sql okay first you have to understand this basic concept why i am focusing all these things because these are the preliminary concept of our any application if you develop any application in future any application then what will happen these are the basic structure that is Yeah, there is a there is a UI, there is a API, there is a database. Maybe your project, apart from database, they are using some different structure. Maybe they are using from different um, structure or they are using some different concept. But always remember, UI is used to display the API is used to process the data and used to store the data. Now let me explain what you are going to do in all these things first we go for ui then api then database that is the structure ui is stand for display the data ui for display api for process and database for store I, these are the concept you have to first understand basic then we'll go for project Project of this UI API and database. If you develop any project, if so just an example of WhatsApp. WhatsApp means you are using the interface, mobile interface, right? Or you are using the web interface. Any interface you are using, that is the UI part. That they are developing on certain programming. It, it may be Angular, it may be any any programming. Then when you type something and send the message to your friend or your family, when you send it, your mobile to when you are send the mobile data is going from your mobile to your friend's mobile that communication means just example let me explain that part also suppose this is your whatsapp screen okay this is your whatsapp whatsapp screen just example i'm drawing something this is your whatsapp screen and what happen you type something you hear some data and click the button send okay now what happened when you type something, this screen we call as a UI. Or, or, or I already ex explained your mobile screen, your mobile WhatsApp. Is. OK means your mobile screen if you open your mobile you can see that whatsapp what you are typing something when you type something and you click on this button send then your friends is going to receive the data right that communication that data from from your mobile to your friend mobile from your your mobile to your friend mobile the data communication okay let me suppose it's your mobile Suppose user 1 and suppose user 2. Okay. Now, when you write something and send the data, the data will go from, it will not go to direct from here to here. It's not going to go direct from here to here. Why? Because the data you cannot send from one system to another system. To tra transfer the data from one system to another system, we require a bridge. That bridge we call as a API. This bridge we call as a API. Always remember this concept. This bridge communication between this user to called as a API. Always remember that API also vital role of your application. Because why I am saying? Because this API is the communicator between multiple clients. Client means the screen. Okay, and if you're going to send a data from this user to this user or this user to another user and the same same time this user also sending some, some same user is sending the data from this screen to this screen now first will go to the api okay then from api to it will go to the user means from user 2 to user 3 if you are sending something then it will go to first user 2 first will go to api then it will going to send to the user and here what will happen 
everything the medium will be the API. But this API as a told is the communication medium for data transfer. Okay, why? Because you cannot send direct from user to user to from user to another user directly. For that, we require the communication. That communication will be using the help of API. Let me go and discuss what in the screen what you understand. To develop this UI, to develop this UI, first we require the Angular. What will project contain? This we are going to develop in Angular because Angular is the uh, one of the UI lab, UI framework. Using that we can develop the user interface. Okay. But this API will go and develop this API using Node.js. Okay. This is going to develop using Node.js. And as I told, just just example, you are sending some data to your, your user and what happen when you, if you next time you open the data also you can able to see the all the old record right that data is stored somewhere right the data should be stored somewhere it's not going to store your mobile just imagine how many friends you have how many charts you are sending how many groups you have how many data you are sending that data we cannot store in the cloud machine right it will be heavy due to that all the data machine that data we should store in a separate place that separate place we call as a database data storage mechanism we are doing any places that we call as database means i i'll i'll um, draw one uh, draw one um, line here how you know that how, how it's working this is the database second database or short form db Always, next time if I call DB, then you know that it's a database. Okay. Now, the data will send from this API to, from user to API. Before that, it will go to the database and check. Database, it will go to database and database will check the data, store the data. Then based on that, it will go to respond the data and then it will go to the next API then API is going to respond to the data. Means each and every communication based on the requirement, not always true, but based on the requirement, data will go to the API. API will go to send, uh, database will uh, save the data after response will go to send the data to the, again to the client. For that reason, you can see that this user interface is going to develop in Angular. This API is going to develop in Node.js and the database we are going to develop using MongoDB. Okay, this database we are going to develop in MongoDB. Now, all these things, if you learn, then we are saying that okay, you learn end to end of your project. If you learn only one part, suppose you are learn, learn only Angular part, then how you know that how the API communication happening, how authentication happening, how logging happening, how database is part, all these things. Our main intention of this project is if you learn about all these things then you will be able to complete project from starting from end this kind of developer the developer who will use both ui and api and we call as a full stack developer full stack developer full stack developer means you are the full you know all the stacks like Full stack double stack means it is a one on one one step. Okay, you know UI, you know API, you know database. In the market nowadays more more like people are demanding on this full stack developer means you have to develop the UI, you have to develop the API, you have to develop the database. Means you are the person who is going to develop everything. That's the reason. If you learn this course, if you learn this course, you will learn the UI part, you learn the API part, you learn the database part. If you go to any company, any MNC, then you we are going to tell you how you can write the program for different, different structure. That's the reason. That's the reason we are focusing more on this non-functional requirement. Because this non-functional requirement is more important than the functional requirement. If you learn Angular, you can develop a list of product. But just imagine how fast we are going to display the product, how fast we are going to filter the product, how, part, how fast we are going to search the product. All this kind of stuff you learn about the non-functional requirement, how to cache the data, 
how to log the data, how to performance optimization, lot of things you will go and learn in the non-functional requirement. Okay. Now we have discussed the, the things about our project, basic project architecture. If you go any project, this is the simple architecture. There is a UI, there is a API, there is a database. The UI is going to send request to the API. API is going to send request to the database. Database responds something and API process the data, then send to the if you develop any project, these are the basic structure of your application. Now, I think uh, these are the enough for today. We have discussed a lot of things about the project and all these things. I think um, if you guys are interested uh, for this uh, development, please uh, share your uh, mail ID uh, to this chat and I am going to uh, send you the actually when the class is going to start. It's most into next week or next to next week uh, based on the our management decide. Please, if you are interested, please uh, share your mail ID in the chat and uh, we are going to direct discuss with you. Your mobile number also good. If I are going to send a mobile number also, it will be easy to communicate with you. Okay. If anyone is interested, please send your mes uh, mobile number or mail ID to in this chat group. We are going to send the invitation when our, our actual the class is going to start. Yeah, you uh, like uh, mentioned uh, like uh, yes. Azure DevOps and Azure uh, CI/CD, right? How uh, I mean, the project is going to implement with uh, DevOps, uh, Azure DevOps, and Git? Yeah, yeah. yes, yes. Let, let me explain that one also because that I, I have explained all these things yesterday, but let me explain once more this one. Okay, okay. we are not going to only give you this. Uh, only not going to give their programming okay this is anyhow you're going to learn all these things okay apart from that we'll start from the project part means how we are going to design a project like we are going to use the azure devops tools in this sprint in this sprint we're going to create an iteration and in the iteration we're going to create a teams and user storage task management how the actual project work and we'll in the end of every sprint we have a demo and delivery it means how the agile every day we have a call this kind of system we are going to follow but doing this all kind of project management tool we go for the project tool project tool means we are going to use azure DevOps project management tool and inside that we learn about how to store the code how to store the branching strategy all this kind of like azure devops tool we are going to use and code commit how we go and create a branch and commit the code merge the code into the dev, dev or master or any different branch then we'll do the concept of pull request after the code is committed to the specific branch how will set up the ci cd pipeline for angular all these things we are going to learn in the project tool because our main intents are not only angular learning angular you will learn everywhere but our main part will be the how a project will start everything you are going to learn in the project section for that reason, we are more. You can see that our more focus on this project part only. The project will be going to display okay. all the kind of whatever the project structure we are following. Second one is the how we are going to use the tool. Then we will go to discuss about the Angular project. Okay, coding is not going to start from day one. First we will plan. First we will execute to do everything and start for the program. Okay. Yeah. Okay. For the unit testing, what kind of uh, technology? Yeah, for unit testing, testing, we are in the Angular, we are using the Jasmine and Karma. The ja okay. Yes, unit testing, we are using the unit for unit testing, we are using the Jasmine and Karma. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I am done with my session. Like next week, we are planning for a uh, go for the regular classes, means all these classes. The class timing will be the morning, uh, this same timing for weekdays, like from morning uh, 8.15 to 9.30, all the days and um, that i'll inform you when you're going to actually start the class okay